This video will be a video analysis on some of the countries that have been playing the AOSC so far. An example that I'll bring out will be Thailand, Korea, New Zealand and Malaysia Team A. Now with two games of competition already gone at this point of recording, uh, it meant to me actually already several hours of viewing their game both live and then as well as on stream. Uh, and I hope to condense these countries playing strategies for you in this video. Now, this video can solely be for tactical nerds like me, you know, knowing what the different plays uh, that the different countries uh, are doing. Thus, I'll be giving a quick summary for those who just want to listen and get off this video quickly. But for those that want to hear a lot more deeper analysis, uh, just stay all the way to the end of the video. Uh, and I'll be putting timestamps at the description below if you want to jump or skip around, uh, depending on which countries you want to you, you hear more. And now for the quick review, now first off Korea, um, I'll try to condense with uh, words as well in terms of Korea, I find them very elegant in their play, uh, so that one keyword is elegance. Um, they play strong foundational basics uh, in their ball handling and, and passing ability. Um, so I'm really happy to see that they can, they can play, right? Um, their play was, like I said, elegant, especially against uh, Philippines. The way they weigh their passes around and play their opponents around, it was actually very nice to, to see on an individual front. Um, however, um, fitness seems to be the lacking factor for them to, say, push off to the next level. So that's Korea. Now, for Malaysia, I find them a very, very hardworking team. You can see from their team spirit, uh, in the bench and from the way they defend. So they have a clear defined uh, defensive approach using the W shape. Um, they are very hardworking. However, um, when it attack, they do seem to have a lack uh, in terms of the cutting edge and it can be shown by the, old, the, the, the few goals that they have only scored so far. Now for New Zealand, I think they are actually very fun to watch um, as a neutral especially. Uh, it is a bit surprising because in the past tournaments they were usually the beating boys but however this time around they are actually proving uh, me and as well as I believe the, the, the audience wrong. Uh, they actually have a few, oh no, they actually have a good bunch of players with strong attacking uh, game sense. They have flair to their game, uh, especially when they build up play, using a lot of movements on and off uh, in attack. Uh, I like that they are constantly moving, their game awareness is high. However, however, what shocks me is actually their defense. To me, their defense is and was and might be still their Achilles heel, um, depending on the next few games they play so far, because it seems like they lack of discipline and in shape. Now next, Thailand. Thailand, uh, in two words to just describe them, I would say they are like the big brother. They, they take the, the game tempo according to what they want to play with ease. They build up play is slower and controlled, unlike say countries like New Zealand. However, once they activate their, their attacks, it is fast, it is decisive, and they, they, they just they just snap it very quickly. Then, but on the defensive side, they operate a more higher press uh, in order to try to win the ball back quicker. Um, and once they win the ball back quicker, they reset the ball and then the game will sort of slow down a bit. They will control the game tempo. So they do what they want, when they want, however they want. So it looks very much like a big brother. So, okay, that's the quick summary for the four countries that I'm able to observe. Uh, relatively more in the first few matches and now let's go deeper into these four countries. Let's go deeper into the different countries in terms of how they play. First up, Korea. Uh, I'm just going to talk about some of the attacking plays, defensive plays, the strength weaknesses that I'm going to have observed so far. So for Korea, right, they do operate um, this way in a sense that a typical drop pass play um, however, they utilize this last man. Right? They utilize this last man as much as possible as the pivot of the attacks. Meaning to say that they'll, this last man will either do a swing swing, that's one, or if they will do a drop pass play over here, 
this guy would not dribble up. Instead, he will stay very much as a pivot and offer the swing pass again, whether is it to the left or to the right. And if the play is being recycled such that again, he receives the ball again, again, not much movement on the ball, but rather waiting for support and movements by the other four players before he does another swing swing. Now for Koreans wise, once they are able to see a certain openings, for example, let's say they are able to swing it to the left and a movement available down, this next swing will be passed on down or the, this uh, what you call player will be able to dribble down before they move up the ball into the opponent's half. Now once they move the ball into the opponent's half, then that's where the next step of their attack comes in. Uh, it seems like they will operate this way, whereby it looks like a top, it looks like a top three triangle, and as well as a bottom two defenders just to cover at the back. Now with the top three triangles, they will operate. Uh, I would say three different ways. Okay, one way is. Example, if the guy receives over here, if he has the space because there's already a guy in the screener rebounder role and if he's a righty uh, player, he will take in and drive into the, into the center region to try to score. So it's just a simple dribble in, drag shot, bam. Okay, this is one way. Another way is if there is no outlet through the middle, what happens is because there's an outlet to the, to the corner, this would be one pass. And when this one pass in, they will then subsequently play the, the back the goal play. Meaning to say that the screener rebounder will offer the play behind, a pass through behind before you see certain runs like this. So with runs like this, they will then try to play through the back. Now if play through the back doesn't work, and if play does uh, recycle out say to the corners, they will again form the triangle with the two defenders still at the back uh, and these other movements might, might be created whereby I call it the cycling play. So they will cycle and recycle the ball um, move, sorry, they will cycle and recycle the ball on and off uh, meaning to say that if let's say this guy this has space to dribble in he will penetrate in to see if there's a pass or if he continues to move, this will become a screener rebounder. This guy will offer this outlet because if there's no way through the center, then the pass will get back down to the corner before the cycling continues. So they might cycle a few times uh, depending on whether they keep the ball or they make a shot or if they lose ball possession, then that's where they will go back to their defensive uh, situation. So in their defensive situation, um, when they lose the ball, they will drop back down immediately to the three-quarter mark. To the three-quarter mark. And this three-quarter mark, they'll operate a simple dice five formation. Now with this dice five formation, their aim is to protect the center. Let me just draw uh, an area. They are trying to protect the center meaning to say that they are refusing any ball to go through the middle. They are allowing more freedom for teams to play on the perimeter. Um, and this is the way they have been working. Now, however, with this size 5, uh, it's pretty much a disciplined approach. Um, there's no traps or little to no traps, I would say. Example, over, over here, they will still stick to their formation uh, more or less strictly in shape so they, there's little to no double team and if they have to play it down they will come back down to their half court dice 5 situation now what I do also note is uh, their half court defense is pretty tight pretty stable um, they do not lose their men that easily so nicely in defense in the zone and when they need to man mark, they man mark, man mark well. Um, there's lesser what we call ball watching, uh, and their defense are pretty tight. However, one thing to note is, uh, especially in the Singapore game, is that their fitness. It seems like their fitness is 
slightly lacking, let's say, in compared to Singapore's point of view. Um, losing loose balls uh, to Singapore, 50-50 challenges, uh, Singapore's are still winning it. And it was clearly evident through the stats as well because in the first two periods against Singapore, they conceded four goals. But in the last period against Singapore Team A, they conceded another four goals as well. So in the first two periods and the last period, they conceded equivalent goals. So fitness might be a factor for them. Um, their gameplay is good. Uh, there is a, a flow, there is a pattern of play. However, if fitness is not good enough then that's where that is the next level that they will probably have to reach or or improve uh, before they can able to compete against countries like singapore or thailand um for malaysia right for malaysia wise it's a total different approach in terms of their defense uh, let's talk about their defense first all right in terms of their defense yes they would still want to protect the middle over here as shown However, if let's say example the ball is over on their right side of their court, they would operate a W instead of a dice five. Let me just show the arrows for you, W shape. And it was very clear and defined in terms of how they want to operate this shape. Similar fashion in terms of uh, Korea, they would not allow or prevent or the idea is to prevent balls from penetrating in. Therefore, when balls are being played through the sides, they would strictly hold their shape and they hold their shape pretty well. Um, but because of that, again, similar to Korea, there's little to no trap, say, example, in the mid-court or say somewhere in the three-quarter mark in their half-court defense. Now I've played against this this is a bit of sharing. I played against a team where they play this exact W shape. And what happens is after about five, ten minutes of play, it was clearly evident that where uh, where their traps are. So the traps that I played against was this. When the ball is being played to my player over here in the half court, straight away I can see players coming in, the forward will drop down, and even at times it looks like a triple team. To trap this or my, my player in this region as shown by the red square or red area now what this means is that my, my opponents wanted to win the ball off here so that they can then counter quickly on the goal uh, hopefully in a 3v1 or 3v2 or 2v1 situation but Malaysia doesn't do that and because of that because of that ball against uh, the, the opponents that we played so far, they are able to bring it up to their half-court defense with relatively ease. And at half-court defense, they'll then play their 2-1-2 in defense. Okay. Now, next, I'm going to talk about Malaysia's attack. Now, Malaysia, when they handle the ball in attack, what happens is it looks pretty much like the typical triangle play that we have seen you might sometimes operate a 1-3-1 one, one, or at times the triangle at the back with two up front offering the board support uh, depending on where the ball is going okay so they will probably just swing swing a bit and swing and then do a bit of drop pass again before this guy operate over here then one of the defenders come here they will back in the center swing swing again and then maybe he'll find opportunity because this guy is moving here and then down the boards and then that's how they bring up the ball now what is lacking i would say is their general skills because at times uh, i would see that they do fumble the ball um not all the time but at times and it seems like their play uh, it seems very much predictable all right so the combination of these Plus, another thing that I observed before. So, there's this typical play that uh, most or some teams would do, which is the board to board pass, meaning to say the defender to someone in the center and then center straight back down to the top corner before uh, play is being uh, played up into their opponent's half. Now, however, at times when this board to board pass is being played, what happens is the 
first pass is being made. Right? And then the ball is over here. This guy will just immediately do a first time board pass down when his players is in fact still here. No runs is being made and at times the ball is just given away to the opponent very very easily. Um, because they don't penetrate through the middle as much as well. It also means that any ball received here is always down to the sides with uh, insignificant or insufficient uh, penetrating balls through the center it means that they are not giving a lot of goal attacking threats against their opponents now with that yes the summary for for, for malaysia is good defensive three-quarter approach however there's no traps to counter and uh, with no traps to counter they are literally almost defending most of the time and when they have the ball they are attacking play ups or attacking plays uh lacking of I would say uh, creativity might be a bit rigid and the skills level um, perhaps still a bit lacking at times and it shows based on the lack of goals they have scored so far. I hope Malaysia will be able to work on this and we will be able to see a better place for them as we move on. Now next, New Zealand. New Zealand is a very fun team to watch in my opinion, especially if you are neutral. And you are new to the game or if you do not know what floorball about watching new zealand play will be fun because there will be goals that they will score and there will be goals they will concede um, you can see the, the personalities of the new zealands as well are very colorful uh the the goal, goalkeepers and i remember the, the very first goal that new zealand scored against malaysia the guy was just over the moon his celebration totally just showed that uh, he's just new to the international scene but nonetheless, let's talk about uh, New Zealand's uh, attack first. Now, New Zealand attack, they will move everywhere and anywhere on the court. Now, number one, they might plant first a top a forward screener, even though the ball is, already, is just down in the defensive half. So, this means that they stretch the floor very much. Next is they do a lot of the drop play pass that I mentioned just now uh, in Korea. They'll do the drop play pass. However, they do not have a very clear pivot. Yes, they might have the two defensive defenders, but the two defensive defenders are able to move with the ball and off the ball. Meaning to say that when the drop pass is being made, this guy might move off to occupy a certain area players will drop back down to give support with the ball carrier they might swing the ball a bit or this guy might work it through through the middle before they operate another drop pass again so these movements as i'm doing right now um, are actually what they have been doing so they are moving off the ball drop this might provide another cover again then they might swing swing this way, if there's no play up, they'll just swing back down and then movement off the ball, you might swing it here, palm back down, um, gain triple in and then another drop pass, uh, maybe another swing to the ball over there and the play will continue. So the, the, the plays are very stretchy, uh, it's rep it repeats itself after you observe a few times um, and it seems like it's their bread and butter but what they are able to do in this case you know it means that uh, especially against the Malaysians W I just put three of the W shape first so example Malaysia had the I'll just put three of them all right so what happens is they are working a lot of this these penetrative runs through the middle and with enough times defensively if they are running out of shape they are just out of it for a while they would just penetrate through and find spaces and opportunities whether is it to shoot or to pass uh, to players whether is it from the side before they continue their attacks so this can be seen very clearly on uh, New Zealand's point of view New Zealand also have a few good shots takers as seen from their goals scored so far. So attacking wise is actually very nice to watch. 
However, defensively, that's where it's a total different ball game. Uh, let me place again, again a few opponents. Now, if let's say the opponent have the ball in their own half and it's a free hit, corner free hit, whereby the opponent is attacking here. So, New Zealand in, or rather in, let's say another case scenario of a typical team who operates as a dice 5, you would be able to see this shape. Right? The dice 5. Nice, disciplined shape. However, for New Zealand's point of view, if, say, the opponents were standing this way, which I've seen it before, New Zealand will stand same thing. They will literally go into almost a full court man marking situation. Which means, if against better opponents, there will be plenty of spaces, there will be a lot of movements on and off the ball, um, and you will actually create havoc to New Zealand's defence. So this is one observation that I've noted. Another observation is this. When in half-court defence, I'm going to remove the opponents now. When in half-court defence, it seems like New Zealand, uh, instead of operating a traditional dice 5, they decided not to. Because at times, their dice 5 will look very wide. I'm just exaggerating a bit. Whereby their dice 5, the two forwards is very much too far to the back triangle. That's one. Two, another situation I've noted is this. One of the forwards in the half-court situation, the forward is not even back into the dice 5 uh, scenario. Which means that he's just totally up there, either with the last defender of the opponents or actually with no one. So it actually surprised me and shocks me a lot. Um, off the ball-wise, if the ball is at the corner, this center is often being seen, I would say, ball watching. Now, when the center ball watch too much and with space, with space being created with forwards like that, it also means that opponents are able to run around and have space over here to exploit against New Zealand. So with the good attacking plays and the poor defensive uh, shape that New Zealand operates, it shows by the high amount of goals that they have scored and conceded so far, especially in Singapore's game, whereby after the first two periods, New Zealand was actually leading by two goals. However, they actually lost the game, conceding, I believe, four goals to Singapore B uh, and losing the game at the end. So this would probably be an area that New Zealand will have to work on in order to reach to the next level. Now, lastly for Thailand, Thailand is like what I mentioned earlier on, like our big brother because it seems like they want to do what they want, when they want and however they want uh, in the game. Yes, they are more experienced and technically gifted as compared to the other teams. However, this time round, the team that they send is relatively uh, younger and inexperienced as compared to their SEA Games squad. Uh, apparently, they want to give more exposure to the younger players, uh, so kudos to them. Um, they were actually pretty much playing two lines most of the time in the two games that I've seen so far. Uh, and they are actually still dominant despite playing two lines. Now, in defense, let's go to the defensive side. In defense, when opponents have the ball, what they, I will see is instead of dropping down, Right, instead of dropping down, typically like what other teams would do, they do the flip side. They will actually do high press. So when they do the high press, in the end what will happen is if, for example, the ball is here, they will high press up together with the next forward. This center will take up somewhere in the center and a defender will join up and this will be what it's like at the end. One, two, three, four, four up. And then one at the down providing just one safety cover. The one at the back would be very much dominant, strong, fast and be able to sweep up any, any balls that uh, is being passed down to their own half. Or if they were to win the ball, say in the top, say in the top part of the court, it means that it's a quick counter. Or if the counter does not materialize, then they would then reset play back 
and then they'll play into their possessional game. Now let me talk uh, a bit on their attacks. In their attacks, they go by a slow, fast approach. What do I mean by that? It means that in attacks, they are nicely into their triangle because most teams operate such that they are protecting the center with the triangle, whether it's the dice 5 or the W, with the triangle, it means that they are always one man, uh, what you call, it's always a 3v2 situation. They are always one man in advantage. Now with the skill levels they have, they are able to play a slower and much controlled game because they know that the defenders or rather the opponents cannot win the ball off them. Now, what they would also do is by swinging the ball a few times, they are also observing, observing their fellow top two or maybe top forward, what movements or what plays that they are gonna say activate. Now, one example can be this. While swinging the ball over on this side, these two are actually moving or gradually moving towards the other side. So it's a simple diversion play whereby if the defense is on one end, let me just put everyone. So let's say the defense is on one end, all right, they are already getting ready to do this swing, swing, up, swing, here, swing, shot. So the place below is slow, but once they play up, you'll be swing, 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 shoot. Which means they are trying to catch the defense um, off guard. Before the defense is able to swing it back, they are able to already make this place. Now, one of the power play that they, they did was exactly the play that was actually shown over here. Um, power play situation with four men against their five. This was exactly the same play. So this guy was getting ready, this guy was getting ready, they were swinging a few times again based on the, the dominance of the ball and once they are ready and their players are more or less in place, they will do a quick swing around, pass and then they spot, pass, first time pass and then a shot in goal and that was, uh, it seems very easy for them, alright, but it was very structured, it was purposeful. They know when to go fast, they know when to slow it down and because they are playing two lines, they can't go fast all the time. So with the logic that they win the ball quickly, that's where they burn their energy and when they have it back, if they can have a quick counter, good. If no, bring it back, line change, slow things down a bit, look at what uh, potential play there is to come, slow it down and when you want to activate, you activate, bam, bam, bam. And if it works, good, it doesn't work, and then the process repeats itself. So they are very much controlling the game tempo uh, according to how they want. And it showed in their performance, it showed in their results thus far. Now I hope uh, these four analyses on these four teams um, has been good for you. Uh, it's only two games, sorry, two, two days of AOSC thus far. There's still a few more games or a few more days to go. Let's look forward to more exciting matches to come and I'll see you in the next one.